For myself, social justice is about giving people opportunity and voice. Where everybody lives as a human being and is treated and respected as a human being. I really believe that we need to build social justice organizations that embody a sense of accountability and building the voices within the community. People think of Minnesota certainly as a much whiter place than it actually is. I mean, Chris Rock has this joke where he says, uh, you know, Minnesota, the only two black people there are, are Prince and Kirby Puckett. Um, when, when in actuality, uh, I think it's about 80% of the kids in the Minneapolis school system are kids of color. And the largest group of color in the St. Paul school system is, is Asian. Um, we have the second largest Hmong population in the country. In Minnesota, we have this thing called Minnesota Nice. And so it's sometimes difficult to help people understand that Minnesota isn't always very nice. And that niceness can, can hide the disparities that we have and the level of racism in the community. The 2004 status of girls in Minnesota uh, states that Asian American girls across the board at 12th grade have the lowest self-esteem of all races all ethnicities. For example, victimized people uh, from domestic cases, mostly we serve um, the wives of um, Caucasian husbands. In you know, this case, it's the justice is not there because of the language barrier, cultural barrier. Most of the cases, you know, they were victimized, but the husband speaks better English, so he just um, make up the story that he is the victim. Unemployment is a big issue for my community and then house foreclosure and cost of living. When they talk to me, they said, Sunny, my salary is still the same, my hour rate is still the same, but the gas going up, the food going up, the house, in, the house going up, uh, the house insurance, insurance going up, so healthcare going up. Because we keep telling people, um, that they can only become this or that. And, and to me, um, when we live in a society that does that to people, whether it's gender or race or cultural identity, um, we've done ourselves a disservice as, as human beings in the world. We've been working in this town since we were kids. Like we were, we were cornerstones of the foundations that were built in the city around the arts. Mm -hmm. And yet I think we're kind of seen as always tangential to a movement rather than being an integral part of a movement. The elders are the ones who were invited by the, their family members to live in this country. They survived from World War II, Korean War, Vietnamese War. They are very resilient, wise elders we serve. We try to maintain, to respect them so they could live in this country with dignity. When we came here, it's the language. We don't speak English. When someone's sick in the house, and we don't know who we need to call. We just guessing 911, but I don't know just 911 for everything. But when we call 911, we don't know um, how to tell them. You just say help, help, but we just don't know how to explain what kind of help we need. So I think ideas and approaches to doing social justice work always has to come from the ground up. It always has to come from the community. And there will always be multiple ways in which the community feels that that can be done. Welcome to Lao Assistance Center of Minnesota. We provide a service to the Laosun community uh, in Minnesota 
to apply for you know assistance, uh, housing, um, uh, health, and even a doctor appointment. You know. You come to see your own people speak the same language. Easy to understand. We know each other well. It's not only recreation hours. It's a time to create meaning in your life by doing something for others. My feeling about the arts and the long-time struggle for social justice has been to, first of all, expose the workings of that system, and then attempts to dismantle it, and to create something else in its place, whereby people will be afforded equal rights, equal privileges, equal resources and power. Like that kid who went postal at Virginia Tech? Is that what you're playing at? I'm not that guy. But that's what you want, isn't it? With theater specifically, you have this um, rare opportunity to bring people together because you have all those people in a room and they're seeing and experiencing the same thing. So why not use that as an opportunity to engage somehow? Where, Where am, am I from? from? Chicago. Maple Grizzle. Well, my parents met in New York, and that's where I'm from, but I came here for... Where am I really from? You see the effect on the people that you work with, that when they feel empowered, they are so much more powerful as individuals and as agents of change in our society. There's a huge amount, um, even more proportionally, women are drawn to Tycho, and I think it's because it is, by its very nature, an empowering art form. Um, seeing women play Tycho is a powerful thing. Seeing like power, grace, musicality, seeing all those things represented, you don't get to express yourself in that area of your life in most ways. And so when people see you play Tycho, they see you in a new way. They see you. They see different parts of you that you just don't get to show in regular life.